Hey, what's up guys? Today I'll show you a science fiction action film, Repo Men, The Repossession Mambo. Spoiler ahead, watch out and take care. The movie begins with the Repo Man in an old abandoned building. He is inside a room using a typewriter, typing about the quantum mechanics of Schrodinger's cat. It is a thought experiment that if you place a cat and give something that could kill it, leave it in a box and seal it, no one would not know if the cat is dead or alive until they open the box. So until the box is opened, the cat is in a sense of both dead and alive. He continues to wonder about this theory. One evening, the repo man stands by the window, looking at the scenery of a brightly lit city. Working with the union, he waits for a customer, who by now still doesn't pay his credits. The customer enters his apartment accompanied by a woman. He is surprised at the sight of the repo man. Upon introducing himself, the customer reassures the repo man that he can pay his debts. This line of the customers apparently doesn't work, so he shoots the customer with a stun gun and reclaims the artifact, the artificial organ that the union sells to their clients. The following day, the repo man proceeds to locate some of the customers past the due dates of their payments. He recollects the artifacts back one by one, slowly but surely getting back what the union owns. It was another typical day for him. A few hours later, the repo man visits his wife at work. The wife asks her husband if he is able to talk to his boss to request to be moved from repo department to sales. The wife believes that her husband's current line of work is a bad influence on their son. She wants him to start giving more time to his family, rather than being at work all the time. The repo man makes up an excuse. At a barbecue party on a sunny day, the partner receives a phone call and asks the repo man to reclaim an artifact from a past due customer. The repo man hesitates because his wife and son are with him and they are at their house. Nonetheless, he agrees to it and lets his partner off to do the job. There, a cab drops off a long delinquent customer in front of the home where his partner awaits. He stuns the customer and casually slices open his stomach with a kitchen knife to retrieve the artifact. The repo man's wife realizes that something is going on. She makes her way to the front yard to see her husband's partner fixing a kidney. The wife is furious. She storms off with her son and threatens her husband to make a choice. That night, the repo man and his partner drive through the night. Upon reaching the port, the machine that tracks past two clients rings like crazy. They spot a ship filled with clients that need reclaiming. It's a nest, as they call it. The two men prepare to ambush the sea vessel, and they are able to reclaim 32 artifacts. They go back to the Union after what seemed like an endless task of reclaiming almost three dozen past two artifacts. The boss is impressed about how his two best employees can handle reclaiming a nest and asks them if they wish to be promoted. The repo man hesitates and is about to request being transferred to a different department when his partner interrupts them and asks just to get paid the usual. Moments later, the two men drive home. The repo man makes a final decision of ending his career as a repo. His partner is devastated by the news but respects his decision nonetheless. Upon dropping him off in front of his apartment, he tells the repo man to reclaim his last artifact from a musician. This musician happens to be one of his favorites during his growing up. The repo man agrees and leaves for one last hurrah. He enters the home of the musician and explains to him the procedure. He uses a defibrillator in order to stop the musician's artificial heart. However, the device malfunctions due to a faulty shock unit and sends the repo man across the room, severely injuring him in the process. Later, the repo man wakes up from a coma in the hospital unit. He finds out that because of the severe injuries he incurred, he must get his heart replaced with an artificial one. He doesn't want to claim it, so he removes the equipment connected to his chest and starts to weaken. The repo man is convinced by his partner and his boss to get the artifact surgically fixed again. Afterward, he goes home to his wife and son, only to find that his keys to the front door aren't working. The wife kicks him out of their home without letting him speak to his son. Apparently, the wife has had enough of her husband. The repo man momentarily lives with his partner. Things are back to normal, or so does the repo man think. One night, he goes to another client's home that is passed to. He manages to knock the client out and proceeds to do his task. But it would appear that after the repo man's surgery, he finds himself unable to perform his duties. He cannot reclaim the artifacts any longer. The partner finds out that the repo man has not been doing his job to reclaim the past two artifacts. So he takes him to another nest with enough artifacts to clear his debt. Much to the partner's dismay, the repo man cannot accomplish the job. His partner is furious at his actions and demands he stays there until he gets over what is holding him back. He leaves without another word. Not long after, two of the men his partner stunned beforehand wakes up and knocks the repo man out cold. Moments later, the repo man wakes up to a beautiful voice singing in the distance. 
He manages to track down the familiar song and finds the singer from the bar he usually goes to with his partner. He sees her high as a kite. The singer then passes out from drug intoxication. He brings her to a motel and soon finds out that the singer has about 10 artifacts passed to. The following day, the repo man is determined to clear the singer's and also his own accounts and proceeds to break into the union office. Upon trying to clear the accounts, he is interrupted by his partner who lectures him and lets him leave afterward. The same night, the repo man goes back to his old home to say goodbye to his son. Subsequently, he drives to the outskirts of the city with the singer to seek asylum. He burns his car in the process, leaving no trace of his and the singer's location. Living their days as runners, they look for clothes and other objects that can help them get by in their new lives. The singer manages to find a typewriter as she goes from an abandoned area to another. Getting comfortable with each other, the singer shares her backstories of how she becomes afflicted with chronic diseases, experiences a car crash, and other reasons that force her to resort to buying artifacts on the black market. Not long after, the repo man and the singer fall in love and become a couple. The singer gives him the typewriter she found not too long ago. Upon finishing the repo man's manuscript, he and the singer see that a colleague is out to get him to recollect the artificial heart. The couple sets up a trap, and the colleague drops through a hole in the floor. Being an abandoned building, the weak structure of the floor continues to break, and the singer falls through the same hole and ends up damaging her prosthetic knee. Before the colleague can shoot the singer, the repo man manages to drop his typewriter on the colleague's head, smashing it and killing him. They manage to drive away from the place using the colleague's car. The repo man decides to break into the union office again by wearing a lung costume. He visits his boss and threatens to kill every one of his employees if the boss does not wipe his records clean. Unfortunately, due to the repo man's past attempt to wipe out his own records, the union decides to pull off all local scanners and that every single collected artifacts had to be brought to the main office for scanning there. As the repo man no longer has any other choice, he manages to convince the singer to leave the country together. They then reach the airport and are able to get through the scanners. But alas, the singer's knee starts to bleed and two passengers are able to notice the mess. The security officers escort them to the office and a fight breaks out. As the couple is leaving, the partner is seen on the other side of the security panel and watches them leave. They leave for another place to find the black market collector, an old friend of the singer's. They then proceed to go to a black market doctor to get her knee replaced. A nine-year-old performs the surgery without a hitch. After the procedure, they go back to the room of the black market collector, only to find him dead. His body is sliced open and an organ missing. The partner shows up and tries to convince the repo man to rejoin him in the job. The repo man refuses, and his partner finally reveals to him that he is the one that rigged the defibrillator unit that earlier caused the repo man's heart to fail, because he only wants him to continue to work as partners. They get into a fast and furious fight. The partner manages to overpower the repo man, possibly even breaking every bone in his body. The partner knocks him unconscious by hitting him with stone brick. Seconds later, the singer awakens him and shows that she just stunned his partner. So they flee the scene as an organ repossession raid is underway. The couple manages to escape to an underground resident, where they meet a freedom fighter who saves them from getting killed. The following day, the repo man sees the huge damage that happened the night before. He decides to meet with his wife and son on a train one last time. The wife is furious to see the singer and nags on and on to her husband. The son stunts his mother to stop her from having the cops go to them. The repo man passes his manuscript to his son and leaves them on the train. Not long after, the repo man and the singer break into union headquarters, and they manage to fight their way through the facility to the union's database. The repo man shows just how skilled he is as an assassin. He fights off with several more killers using different weapons, slashing, stabbing, and hacking them off one by one until he reaches the door of the pink room. Using the singer's prosthetic eye, they manage to enter and seal themselves inside as the repo man's partner and boss arrive. Unfortunately enough, the server's only interface is an organ scanner, which requires the couple to cut themselves open to use the scanner internally on each of their artifacts. Only then will their accounts be cleared. The two men enter the server room using an artifact from one of the slain killers. They find the singer near death as the repo man attempts to scan the last artifact past due. The partner is ordered to kill the repo man, but he instead murders their boss by stabbing him right on the throat. Blood gushes out as he helps the repo man revive the singer. After that, the partner deposits two grenades into the artifact reclaimed drawer of the server. They are stuck in the room while the mainframe is destroyed, erasing all of the union's customers' data in the process. 
The Repo Man and his partner laugh at last. Later, the Repo Man is on a sunny tropical beach. He enjoys his freedom with the singer and his partner. His manuscript has been published as a book entitled The Repossession Mambo. However, as the partner talks to him, he notices that his partner suddenly disappears. He also sees the beach flicker with static. It is then revealed that the Repo Man is actually unconscious for having sustained severe brain damage when his partner knocked him unconscious. His partner is able to pay off the Repo Man's debt for his artificial heart and pays to link his brain to a neural network. The movie ends with the boss delivering another sales pitch for the neural network. It is all just a dream to the Repo Man. He will continue to live out his life peacefully in a computer-generated dream world, while the Union continues to reclaim past two artifacts, living their lives as Repo Men. This is Daniel's CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.